Now, a lot of confusion comes about when we talk about core issues. That sounds really powerful, but it's very confusing for a lot of people. They're going, so a tabletop is a core issue, and it has legs, and it's got aspects, and before long, I've lost everybody in the room. So what I'm trying to do is demystify, deconstruct this, because it's really pretty simple. Um, at its core, sorry, it's a little bit of a pun there, um, there's the rule, and it may or may not be my core issue. Let's talk about a core issue example. Uh, does anybody have one, first of all? Can you, does anybody absolutely sure they know what a core issue is and they can give me an example? Oh, come on, man. I don't bite. Beautiful, low self-esteem. And a lot of clients will come to see you because they have this thing called low self-esteem. And if I personify that, I'm going to say, I have low or no self-esteem, right? I have no, whoops, the right low self-esteem. So maybe one of the nice things you could do is say, really, how do you know? And how would they know? Since you gave me that example, can you tell me one of the reasons that that person might say that they believe that? Let's do this. Let's try to contain this. I want you to get in touch with my inner eight-year-old. So that we're just going to speak very clean, simple language, because otherwise it spirals out into confusion really easy. So let's say, how do I know that you, let's call you Jimmy. Let's depersonify you for a minute. How do I know, Jimmy? that you have this low self-esteem problem. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. How? About myself. Ah, good. Thank you for helping me understand. Can you tell me a little bit more? I don't feel good don't about like myself because I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I look. Hmm. Are there any events that come to mind in your life that told you that that was true? Yes. Yeah? Oh, could you tell me one? For example, my mother saying I would never amount to anything. My mom said I would never <coughs> amount to anything. And was that once? Oh, no. Aha. Uh -huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we've just found here is another tabletop, okay? However, this is where it gets a little funky, so stay with me, okay? I have low self-esteem, has a tabletop underneath it called never amount. I'm shortening this up, okay? This was not exactly where I wanted this to go, but I'm trying to be honest, okay? All right, and so, do you see all the legs that I drew underneath that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say, for purposes of Jimmy's example, these are all the times mom told me that. That's what holds it up, right? Because I wouldn't think I'd never amount to anything unless, what? Nobody told me. I was told, and in this case, apparently repeatedly. <laughs> Well, not necessarily. Everything she said that ended in, Jimmy, you're never going to amount to anything, goes under that table. Every event that had that quality or characteristic to it goes under that. And so I want to clean this up a little bit 
before we go too far, and I'm going to ask you, for just for purposes of today, I want you to go back to the low self-esteem thing. I've put one leg under there, never amount to anything, okay? So let's, let's talk about that another time. Right now, let's just talk about the giant core issue of I have low self-esteem. Do you see that it sounds specific, but it's really not, right? Because it could be different for her and her and him and him and him. It's giant. But it still has the same function. It has legs that hold it up. The legs are the events that caused that to form and to be held up to this day. So why did you say that next thing like that? Because this is one of the legs, it's a sub-table, and it's getting too complicated. So I want to start at the very beginning, okay? So if you'll honor me to do that, we'll talk about sub-tables in a minute. But the basic idea is one such table leg underneath low self-esteem is when my mom said, you'll never amount to anything. Was there another event that led you to believe that you have this low self-esteem problem, Jimmy? Well, what comes to my mind is another statement that she would have made. You know what that is, right? What is another statement she might have made? You wish you were never born. There you go. Wish you were never born. Okay. Are there any more? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot? Yeah, there's a lot. Okay. So, for purposes of this illustration, again, you're not Jimmy. We're just trying to make this clear for people. Do you see how all these different table legs are evidence that that's true? Right? right? Yeah, but... So what I want to do in EFT is I want to start taking these table legs, a.k.a. evidence, support, out from under the table. Because if I take enough of them out, what's going to happen? The table's got to fall down. There's no evidence or support holding it up anymore. I'm starting to see, this is the generalization effect again, in effect. Right? My subconscious is going to start going, hey, wait a minute, these are all the same thing. Dang. So I don't have to do them all. But what you want to do is you want to look at these legs holding up this problem, and you want to say something like, worst first. So I'm going to go, which of these events you told me about is most troubling to you right now? Notice I'm not asking about the past. I'm right now. Which one right now is most troubling? Because that's the one I'd like to start with, okay? The reason I'd like to start with it is if I can take out the big guy and the next big guy and the next big guy, all the small guys are going to follow suit, right? It's going to be like a domino. And that's what I want. I don't want to sit here all day long, either do you, okay? So, okay, for purposes of this example, I would ask which one is most troubling right now. And let's say he said um, this one, okay? And I'm going to go, okay, about how troubling right now? And he's going to say, just give me a number. Seven, eight. Okay, I'm going to take the, the larger one, eight, okay? So in deconstruction, in EFT land, now I have something to work on. Because what happens if I just work on the tabletop, even though I have low self-esteem? What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. I'm going to feel a little better about things for a few minutes until I leave your office and go, hey, wait a minute. I don't feel so good. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. I just heard someone say something when you asked that question, and they said, what's going to happen? Beautiful. Thank you, Joyce. I'm going to reinforce my low self-esteem. I'm going to keep it in place, and I'm going to keep repeating it or finding examples where it's still here, so it must be true. Right? 
But if we work the other way, it's pretty self-evident, I'm going to start cleaning that out and it's going to have to fall. Some kind of law of physics I don't understand, but I've heard about. Okay, so I have some place to start. This is the difference between general and specific. I can work on general to take the edge off. If things are too intense, if I don't know you very well yet, if we're just getting started, if I'm not sure where I'm going to go yet. But if I want to get something down, I have to be specific. And the way to do that is the same thing we've been telling you about for a few days, kind, curious, compassionate questions. And so I asked, how do you know that's true? Do you have some evidence that that is true? Which one, which piece of evidence feels the most intense at this point? And now suddenly I have something specific I can work on. Does this make sense to everybody so far? Okay. So, yes, sir. Does it, uh, when you talk about evidence and, and, and the, the phrase that, that uh, often said I'd never amount to anything, in, in reality, that's false evidence, isn't it? It's all false evidence, yeah. possibly. It, possibly, but possibly not. I, I just, I'm just uneasy with that term evidence because when I think of evidence, I think of something that is factual and accurate. And, and, and that's not. It's a great point, Phil. So how about this? If I'm two years old, and you told me the milk is called juice, what am I going to think? It's juice. It's juice. The evidence is mom said it was true. Got it. It's juice. Thank you. Okay. So we call these faulty truths. They might be truth, or there might be something a little wrong with them. Right? But we don't actually know that we're operating under this faulty truth unless we examine them. And most of these things are so early bought and ingested and acted upon and reinforced. We no longer know. To me, this is like your operating system. I had no idea I was on 1.7 and the rest of the world was on 11.4. No idea at all until you asked me about that. So this is one of the kind things you are doing for people. You are helping them examine those truths they've been operating under to see if they might in fact be true or not so true. Okay? So this is the process by which we begin examining our operating system. Yes ma'am? Uh, what if, and like in my case, and I've heard from many others, a lot of times we say what we call when this first happened Childhood. Mm -hmm. And like in my case, this, I can hardly ever remember anything unless it just be very, very close traumatic. Mm -hmm. So, how do you um, get down to those pieces for those of us that can't? It's a very nice question, and I'm going to say it's not so unlike your seatmate today. In Jandi speak, there's a really good reason for this. I just don't know what it is yet. even though I can't remember anything about events that led me to that conclusion. I can't remember any evidence right now. I don't know what that might be yet. There's probably a really good reason. I just don't know what it is yet. And maybe I accept myself anyway. Another version of this is agreeing with you to sit in the discomfort of not knowing long enough to know. So you just work on like, the, maybe the statements, and even though you don't know quite where they started, you just, you, like I said, you talk to that electro dad. And, right. and in a certain way, I'm like the guide dog. I, I'm not deciding if we're going into Walmart or into Baskin Robbins. I'm guiding you. I'm making sure you don't get into too much trouble, but I'm not making the decisions. I'm the shepherd. I'm the facilitator of the process. You're the manager of the content. I can't force that. And if I see that there's a lot of resistance going on, then that's the wrong question for us at that moment. I'm going to have to work around. I'm going to have to look for another door in which to go on. But that's a great question. Everybody's okay with that so far? Okay. Good. Um, so 
We're going to do a little demo on this, but one of the things that I want to make sure that we're very workmanlike about is we're going to look for what is the general rule or mantra. Another way to look at this is limitation. What can't you do? What are you not allowed to do? Tell me a little bit about that. That can be a core issue or it could just be a tabletop issue. And the difference, I want you to understand this, just a tabletop issue was going to be something specific but less pervasive. A tabletop might be, I can't speak in public. Do you see how that's a limitation? Okay. But is that the lens through which I see my entire life, that I'm not a good public speaker? Probably not. But do you see the difference between I have low self-esteem and how that bleeds onto everything? That defines me and my response to the world, not just when I'm at Toastmasters. Right? That's the difference. So both of these have support underneath them, meaning specific events, evidence, that hold up the table. But one is huge and it defines a big part of my life, if not the whole thing. And one is smaller and more specific and limits me in some way. That is a good way to look at it. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Are you saying one is beneficial and one isn't to focus on the limitation and not the focus? I'm just saying, as we say in Brooklyn, okay. <laughs> one is a specific tabletop that limits me in some very specific way, but not my entire life. Another is the lens through which I see my entire life or behave. Okay? Low self-esteem is going to help me never get the job I want, the person I want, never get to speak up, never get to say my opinion, never get to own my own truth. I can't speak in public very well is going to limit my social engagements in the public forum. Okay? That's all. And I'm going to just probably ignore that. I'm going to probably not go places that would call on me to speak in public. It's a big difference. Well, it is, in fact. You see, never amount to anything is actually one of the legs here. It just happens that there's so many of them that I know that that is a tabletop underneath a tabletop. Okay? So self-esteem is so big and so pervasive, it probably has a picnic ground with the tables underneath it. <laughs> but I can't, deal, I can't deal with the whole KOA campground at the same time. I'm going to have to pick off those suckers one at a time and just deal with this tabletop and the legs underneath it if I'm going to get anywhere. But the generalization effect will depopulate if I give it, but it's due. Who had a hand? Anybody? Yes? Well, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. What a wonderful core issue that is. Okay. Do you, do you see how that one is different than public speaking? I'm not good enough. Is that bigger? Yes. It's huge, right? I'm not good enough to, well, in this case, be born, apparently. So, therefore, that might cause me some problems down the road. But I'm not a good public speaker just means I'm going to avoid that thing. I'm not going to go for the sales manager job. Right? Okay, we're cool. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Um, I think that we need to demo this a little bit. And again, these demonstrations are not free therapy. They are not about having an entire session in front of you. They are about showing you workmanlike steps to deconstruct the problem for a certain technique. And that is our purpose here today, so that you can replicate this and go, oh, that's how that looks. Okay. So... I was talking to somebody today about that. Would you come up? Oh boy. Yep, yep, now you're running. How about 
you you have my friendly Kleenex box. Okay? So what were we talking about today? We were talking about no talking at the dinner table. Mm. And um, I think you asked me, um, I don't remember what you asked me, but I know what I told you. Um, I woke up last night triggered, mm -hmm. couldn't sleep, um, by his laughter yesterday. And I was kind of surprised by that. But that's a lot of laughter. And uh, when I got up and went to another room to tap on it, what sort of um, unlayer, unpeeled itself was, um, I think I was, I had, I shut my eyes. My therapist back there said, keep them open, uh, Leilani. Uh, and I, I may shut them again and I'll find myself sitting at the dinner table. So I'm gonna try to keep them open. Uh, I was probably seven, see there? Uh, seven, um, you know, with the siblings, dad who's a, um, full-blown PTSD, World War II guy, head of the table. Um, Let's just we hold this talk. thought for a second. Okay. Just hold on to it. All right. Because one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to say again, I'm not allowed, tell me that limitation. Not allowed to laugh at the table, but talk would also fall into that. So I'm not allowed talk, to or talk laugh. or laugh. And laughter would get, I get sent to my room without dinner. Okay, so and is there an even bigger statement about that? I'm not allowed to. Hmm. I know. I think I, that seems about it because I don't remember much talk. I'm with all these other guys at the. Okay. No talking. There was no talking, so no laughter, no talking. Right. Do no we, loud laughter. I probably would have gotten thrown out of the house. Okay. So his his really tap grand with. laughter <laughs> was it's like foreign. Okay. Foreign language. Tap with me. Okay. 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 Let's immediately start making this more comfortable. Okay. And it's a way of keeping ourselves in the present moment. Okay. I don't need to go back to being seven, all of me. I just need to recall this event so I can work on it. Right. So, how about if I ask you right now this piece of evidence that you're not allowed to laugh or talk at the table from seven years old. About how troubling is that right now when you think about it? Well, I've got a pretty sizable stomach ache because I missed a lot of meals. Okay. Right now, you're feeling I mean, I'm laughing now because my sister and I laugh about that now. But, mm -hmm. well, I'd get sent to my room and try to come back out and would get sent right back, so I missed meals. Okay. Let's come back to the here and now, and let's just say, when I think about that now, when I think about that now. The rule. The rule. That you're not allowed to talk or laugh at the table. Not allowed to talk or laugh at the table. Specifically that seven-year-old event. Specifically that seven-year-old event. Eight How intensely do I feel that right now? I don't uh, know. It's feeling a little better, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, kind of shot down to a six. Okay, so a six, but am I hearing correctly still in your stomach? Okay, I have a six in my stomach when I think about this rule. I have a six in my a six, 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 six in my stomach. A six, when six I in feel my about stomach. That rule. When I think about that rule, and specifically that seven-year-old event, and specifically that seven. Okay. Is there a good? Uh, let's just sort of wrap this up so it's okay. easier to deal with. What's a good title for? that seven-year-old memory at the table. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. And is it still, when you say don't laugh, is it still a sick six in your stomach? It makes me laugh. <laughs> it's, ah. it's, it's funny or a little funny when I say that. It's a little funny when I say that. Yeah, I'm learning how to laugh. I'm learning how to laugh, wow. More and more. Not like that. Good thing we're not at I a table. That. I don't yeah. like to do that. I don't think that's in there. <laughs> well, that's really good for us to know because that's sort of a, a lofty goal. One. goal really lofty. Really to laugh like Dawson Church. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother's six foot five. I'd love to see him be able to laugh. He's the Vietnam vet. Okay, so there's a lot of different things we're hearing yeah. here. So just because this is a teaching moment, yes. not a session moment, Sorry. 
let me just point these out to you. Even though I'm not allowed to laugh or talk at the table, I certainly wasn't at 7, 8, 9, or 10, or 11, or 12. I wasn't allowed, especially not loud laughter. That was not allowed. And it makes me sick in my stomach, even like a sick six right now when I think about it. And I don't know if I could ever laugh like Dawson Church. And wow, I can hardly even imagine it. And I have a six foot five brother. Boy, would I love to see him laugh like that. And you're starting to make me laugh when I think about that. That's interesting. Do you see all these things popping up? They're all choices. They're all choices. And your job in the moment is to start trying to think of what's a good choice. Right? What's a good choice? And so that means I have to curb myself and not go the most fun choice. Right? So as you're thinking about it right now, I want to go ahead and see if we can work on this leg of your table. Okay? And so I'm just going to check in with you because I said all that preamble stuff. So when you think about the seven-year-old memory now, don't talk or laugh at the table. What intensity is it? It's moved up. It's about five, and it's kind of lessening below it, my diaphragm. So. It's lessening below my diaphragm. Five moved up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any emotion that's associated with that? Like if I had to describe the emotion that's with that, I'm just gathering a little information. Well, you don't want to hear this. <laughs> okay. Well, only because, and I and I will shrink it down, but it, I switched to more sadness that my brother can't laugh. I switched to more sadness that my brother can't laugh. The reason I haven't really put it under your table, but I'm taking note of it, is because this table says I'm not allowed to laugh or talk to the table, instead of we Well, the, well there was a us. we, yeah, it was all of us, but my sister and I were older. He's he's a little younger, so we dared to laugh and pay the consequences. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't think that helped him out though. So that yeah. wasn't a good plan. Okay, so there's a lot of information again. Lots of doors are flying open. Yeah. Can you hear those all? It's that war stuff. <laughs> pain in the neck. It's pain in the oh, neck. And my neck's good. And my neck's good. Good. So I'm going to go back to your diaphragm again. I'm going to kind of close this back down. Try to get a handle on it and deconstruct. Okay. So thinking about your diaphragm, still five? Hmm. Hmm. I think my brother and I are going to have a talk. Ah, okay. A little Abbott Costello therapy. Okay. I don't even watch those. I don't even know why I said that. I hope they're funny. I hope maybe they're funny. something else. Okay. I'm going to ask you to park that one right over there. Okay. Just maybe ask it to have a seat. There's an empty seat right over there. Just going to park that. Because I'm going to really pay attention something that hasn't apparently been paid attention to. Okay. okay. I'm going to go back to your diaphragm. Is it still a thought? Still moving up. Still moving up. Okay. So. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? <laughs> this is, it's laughter. Okay. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Okay. It feels weird though. Yeah. It's amazing how this is happening with or without us, right? We're just happy. Yeah, it's, a, it's like I totally need balance. That's not a surprise to me. Yeah. But I, I feel like, wow, how behind the sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ability to wow. learn something. Okay, cool. Well, let's start dealing with what's left of it. What's left okay. of it? Um, hmm. I'm not allowed to talk at the table like when I was seven years old. And there's part of it still stuck in my diaphragm, but it's moving. Yeah, it's moved up the shoulders, and it's it's a it's a cool it's a I, I say cool as in cool and cool feeling that's just kind of right there. And I'm not gonna use these Kleenexes, so I'm not gonna cry either, laugh or cry. I'm just gonna process. Mm -hmm. just Please gonna let process. me do that. Please let me do yeah. that. Just, okay. I, see, I'm good at I, that. I see process. Okay. So let's just start right Probably here. Probably not. <laughs> let's just start right here okay. so that we can see if we can clean this thing up. All right. That'd be one leg, right? Please. Okay, even though. Even though. I have this memory. I have this memory. Of being seven. Of being seven. And knowing you can't laugh or talk at the table. You can't laugh or talk at the table. And it's, I can still feel it in my body. I can still feel it. But it's moving. It's moving. Up. Up. And it's about a what number? Hmm. It's right up at the top. Right up at the top. Yeah, my eyes. It's sort of like what number? Wow. Or is it just sort of what? Sort of a wow. 
sort of I'm like, laughing because I don't want to say 0.5 because I worked with Leilani, but I, it's like, it's, it's below 0.5. Below 0.5, wow. Can we say that? It's a below 0.5. I and I exactly completely accept myself. And Would I that work for you? Completely accept myself. There you go. So even though, even though I've got this point five, like wow, I've got this point five, like cool, <laughs> like cool, wow, loose, loose. That's the way it is. Yeah, that's the way it is. When I think about this seven-year-old memory, when I think about this seven-year-old memory, called, called, I don't even remember. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> you totally zoned me out. Uh, call don't laugh. <laughs> That's how it is. Problem. Goodness <laughs> sake. Did you write it down <laughs> for me? What it was. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't usually go. Oh, cool. I'm having a hot flash too. So. Cool hot flashes. Got cool it. Hot flashes. Even though I'm Trauma. having cool hot flashes. <laughs> and point five wow. Wow. And it's moving up. And it's moving up. <coughs> That's how it is right now. That's how it is. When right I think now. of this memory. When I think of this memory. Is there anything left of it? No, I'm not even hungry anymore. And I'm not even hungry anymore. Okay, cool. cool. All right. At this point, then I'm just going to ask you to let's do this. Let's run the movie, okay? Let's okay. see. All right. So would you please just take a moment, take a nice breath, breathe in there. Yes. Good. I want you to just run that movie in your head. Start before anything happens. Just let yourself run that movie. And agree with me to stop at any intensity rise whatsoever, okay? And let me know when that's done. I ran the movie and I'm not coming out of my room. And I'm not coming out of my room. But I'm good, I'm, I'm okay with it. I know better than to come out. And I'm gonna stay there and laugh. That's I'm going to stay, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Stay in there. Okay, so there's no intensity in the no. actual scene? Well, my bedroom's way in the back, so I get away from it, so I, I don't hear it. I'm sure there's something going on there. Okay. Which is huge, so there's dinner table, hear. and what I'm hearing is there, there was, there was a. I'm what, missing what do you at call the dinner it? table. The end of the movie if that I came, came out, room. they finished. There would be no talking. There's a no talk kind of thing going on. No there talk dinner. Right Quiet. You know, dishes are cleaned up, and there's right. no food for me. But it's all right. Is there any intensity about any of those parts when you think about it right now? No intensity, but a, a you know a, another thing to talk to my brother about. Ah, another yeah. thing to talk to. And he'll, he'll he may be able to. He always every once in a while this happens to me, but mm -hmm. not this particular issue. Right. And I'll say, gee, have you thought about this? And he'll say, oh, yes. And then he'll think about it, and then he may come back to me with something because they all, he, they don't he doesn't talk much about it either about any of it. So, is it fair to say that what came up for you is another piece of evidence that you're not supposed to laugh or talk at the table, or is it unrelated to that particular table? I think it's probably unrelated to that. Okay. So let's park that in the chair over there, okay. too. Okay. Okay? Unrelated, and I don't... I'm well, it's just for later. Can we just... We'll talk it's about that today. later. So for this purpose, I want you to think about the tabletop. Don't laugh. Okay. Is there any other leg, any other event, specific event, that's holding up that table right now? What I'd like to do now is I'm just going to see if I can find a few. Okay. Um, I think a whole bunch of things collapsed. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you what collapsed. Maybe is that what happened? This I is not working, it. is it? No. Oh. No, I, I see the, the hesitation to even speak. Mm -hmm. it, and I feel it all the time. Well, I don't know if I'll speak from now on, but it's like, should I raise my hand? I don't think so. Okay, I think so, I'll keep it down. So oh, just so I down. understand, I want to make sure that I heard her properly. There are other places where she's seen, I have a hesitation even to speak. Would those be specific events? Would they be underneath that table of don't talk, don't laugh at the table? Mm -mm. Would that be right? I would feel right. Okay. And the whole thing just collapsed all at once. I mean, it collapsed into my awareness. Yeah. And I'm hoping I can laugh about it as I raise my hand to talk. I or or feel like I'm I could. Excellent. That's what. It, okay. I'm gonna give that a shot. 
So just for purposes of this, I'm just going to say, could you just go boing, boing, boing? There's like two or three that you can think of that are about don't speak or hesitating to speak. Could you just give me a couple of those so I know how that is? Oh, well, I mean, it's constant in the nursing profession. I mean, you know, your opinion about something, even mm -hmm. adding a, you know, the differential diagnosis stuff, they're going through it. I hes always say, I hesitate in all of those areas. Okay, I hesitate I in all of those areas. I I mean, you know, if I really think they're on the wrong path, Right. I can speak up. But other than that, I kind of let everybody, let the other group take that. <coughs> let them unfold it. Okay. If they don't bury anything too deep, I'll let them. I'll let them. So that's interesting, right? How about some other part of your life besides the uh, that professional part? Do you see any other events that are kind of popping up going, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of a specific one for you. but. I, I don't get too stirred up. It's, it's I don't waste my energy mm. going into something because if there's a somebody's going to send me my room. Ah, very nice. Okay, so because we have limited time and we're always playing catch up today, I just want you to see there's a tabletop. It's not just don't laugh. It's don't talk. Is that fair? That's fair. And there's a lot of pieces of evidence holding that up. That means stuff that has happened to me that tells me that this rule is true. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And one of them was when I was sitting at the table when I was seven. Just one of them. And there's no intensity about that left. It doesn't feel like there is. Okay, great. And there's some kind of emotional state that she's talking about now that for her is there's a lot of crashing into my awareness mm -hmm. about this issue and all those legs underneath that table that I formed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. right? I appreciate that. I like that. Excellent. The awareness stuff. Okay, so putting, you, putting it back mm -hmm. on the table for me yeah. to look at. Yeah. So this is that part where we come back to examining the rules that we live by and the lens through which we've seen ourselves and our life. <coughs> I think we should clap for her. Okay, so um, we started talking about tabletops and um, her issue was being too much of a people pleaser. Um, and uh, she had lots of legs to this, so she was going faster than I could write. Um, but um, as it, we started to get down to some very strong legs for her, um, I asked her some questions which were, um, if she were to let it go, how would that impact her to release it? And also I asked her if she um, were to hold on to it, you know, what benefit would she have at the same time? Um, and she had some really interesting um, responses to that. Well, things that I was really surprised at when Tamika started asking me questions, it triggered some things that I had no clue. Um, I've always felt like I've been a people pleaser, but when she started pinning me down on the time that I wasn't before that was when my father retired from the military and we moved to a small town. And when we were in the military, we were somewhere two or three years, and I didn't have to make have any long-term relationships. It was just get in and get out, and you were gone. But when I moved to this small town, I realized I needed to form these relationships, and it was important, and I had to do some strategies. And so that's what I put into place. And sadly enough, they became part of my life <laughs> that I wish they hadn't. And this is so great for me because I'm such a strong person, and I have such, such strong thoughts about things. but. I think when, now that I am aware of this, I'm so going to tap on those things, I, it wouldn't have occurred to me to tap on those before because it wouldn't have occurred to me that it was related to anything. It just seemed to not have any nucleus. It just seemed to right. be bits and pieces, but now I'm seeing how it fits together. And it was interesting because she was able to learn 
how much she's liked as a result of her behavior of being a people pleaser and how that has helped her to have more grounding, to have more friends. Um, and other aspects were things like, um, you know, if she were to do certain things, people wouldn't like her. And, you know, she didn't want people to think she was rich and all these other legs that sort of came up. Yeah, I found out it was around money. Why, yeah, yeah, to hold even, on to it. Even the, the, the way people thought of me about money, like I just went on a trip um, to Australia and New Zealand, I would always make sure to tell people it was my, it was a gift from my niece, so they wouldn't think that I really had money. I wouldn't want them to think that. I'd, so all of these other things that I didn't even know were related to this core issue had come up, and it's very enlightening. Oh gosh, I did things that were against my my moral code, against my ethical code when I was um, hanging out with kids in eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, all through high school. I would, I would uh, do drinking, go to parties, hang out with boys, go spend the night at friends and then sneak out with them, um, shoplift, things that I didn't even want to do, but they were my friends and I wanted to be with them and I wanted to make sure that I was liked and accepted into these different groups because there were so many different groups and if you weren't in this group then oh my gosh. So I did things that to this day I regret and fortunately nothing that really affected my um, life, I, I don't have any children because of it or anything like that, but, and then I ended up marrying one of my friends that I met when I was in eighth grade, when I was 13 years old, and then we've been married for 42 years, so I mean, that had a happy ending, but <laughs> gosh, there was a lot of stuff in between that was rocky and hard, yeah. but I would have done differently had I not had that aspect of my life. And, you know, it was very interesting talking about the different legs because it helped her to really pinpoint when this started to come up for her mm -hmm. in the eighth grade mm -hmm. and how important um, being in a military family was and her finally settling down and how she had to enact this tool of people pleasing in order to gain this family of friends yeah. and that's when it really became very solid for her and I asked her you know if she still needed it at this time and she said probably not yeah. um, so some great shifts were happening at the same time good stuff mm -hmm.